What does it mean to not compare ourselves to what other communities or other cultures or races of people deem appropriate or acceptable? And to really just kind of like figure out like what makes us tick, you know, what's beautiful to us? What does our heaven look like? Um, and if you can imagine that, then you can, you can aspire to that. You can attain that. My name is Dr. Fahamu Paku. I'm a visual artist, scholar, curator from Atlanta. And this is the way I think. Always before, you know, opening, man, I'm, you know, uh, usually in my feelings, man, you know, like a little nervous and a little anxiety about it. But I try to calm myself by telling myself that that nervous energy is just, you know, reflection of the fact that I care about what I'm doing, you know what I mean? All of this came about as a result of observing from a very young age that when I walk into a space, people didn't see Fahamu. They saw a black man, right? And they treated me based on their conceptions of what a black man was. And a lot of those conceptions have been informed by visual culture and visual narratives that perpetuated in the media. And so one of the things that I have attempted to do across the corpus of my work is using my own body to destabilize the ways in which people think about black men, right? So when you look across this room and you see this figure, it's like, it's not doing the same thing every time. It's not even wearing the same thing every time. You know, it's not the same attitude every time. It's like multiple iterations of this person. I think it complicates our reading uh, of, you know, black masculinity, of black men, of black bodies, right? Um, and that's my goal is to humanize and to complicate, you know, those images that are oftentimes presented as very, very flat and one dimensional and extremely problematic. There's this really great uh, quote from Albert Einstein. Uh, it says something like, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its life forever feeling inadequate. For me, this idea of, um, of, of a attaining or achieving, you know, what we consider heaven is about having a a, a, a change in perspective on what we consider to be valuable, what we consider to be acceptable, what we consider to be aspirational, right? Um, you know, again, if we're constantly measuring ourselves up against, you know, standards and ideas that don't affirm us in the first place, we'll never be able to achieve that, right? And so we really have to kind of dissociate from the norm, from the standards, from the ideas that are imposed on us and determine our own course. But also I think it's important, you know, to uh, present these ideas in these spaces as well, because it challenges, you know, the people who come into these spaces to see and think differently about um, Black identity, Black masculinity, um, African spirituality, like all of the different ideas that are uh, embedded in my work. My goal through my work is to challenge the way we see things and to challenge the way we, uh, we, we perform you know, um, uh, our identities in the world. We often think of art as, as images or objects, but, you know, I consider my work texts, you know what I mean? Like, these are my essays. This is my academic work. This is my classroom. When I'm presenting uh, my work or even creating my work, you know, I'm filling, you know, my head with as much information and research as I can around a particular idea or subject so that I can, you know, interpret it through these artworks and then put it back out into the public in a way that people can get this same, you know, get this lesson. But I also, you know, am, am, am very uh, intentional about not being didactic, you know, in my work. So my, my pieces are not declarations, they're not statements, they're more like questions, right? Like I'm creating a space for for myself to ask questions, but also to present those questions to my audience so that they can begin to question and interrogate. And then I think that makes for a richer exchange. You know, art is a language, and beyond that, it's a spiritual language, right? Um, even before we called what we do art, right? Like, we've always made aesthetically pleasing things that serve the function, that serve the purpose, that did something that, that performed in the world, right? And I, I, I see myself, you know, as a part of that continuum. Like, you know, when I was a undergrad student, you know, I made a decision, you know, at that time, I, I didn't want to make art that was just a pretty picture. Like it had to do something, right? Like even Du Bois made this observation, you know, that black art is propaganda and it always should be, right? Like I always say in the future, historians will tell what happened, but artists will tell how it felt, you know? 
This experience of our art, whether it's paintings, dance, literature, music, whatever it is, right? Like this is a recording of our experience as human beings, you know, on this world. This is how we connect to something higher than ourselves. This is how we connect to one another. There's never any time that I can think of, and particularly in the canon of, of Black art, where art has not had that function, right? Like it's gonna do something besides just look good. So this project has been such a, like a passion of love for me, this exhibition specifically. You know, this whole idea of If Heaven Had Heights asks us to consider that we can learn so much from watching how people who have had to operate in spaces of lack, how they have been ingenious in their uh, survival strategies and the things that they invent, the things that they create to overcome that oppression, to overcome that trauma. Like, it's so rich, it's so beautiful, right? Um, and and this, this work is a celebration of it.